Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Digital Loop Season 1, Episode 13, uh, 14, sorry. Today we're going to talk about the sharing economy in honor of next week's Loeb in London, uh, of which uh, the sharing economy is going to be the main topic. Uh, hello, Ivan, how are you? Hi, Paul, doing great, thank you. Thank you very much. So, how do you find a sharing economy is a very big topic, as usual, and we're not going to cover it all, but basically, for me, it's the, it's, the, it's basically uh, that access to goods and skills uh, Access is more important than ownership. Uh, this is a big, this is a big trend. So basically, instead of actually owning something, just having the access of it, just having this access of either a good product or service is more important. Becomes more important than its uh, its actual ownership. Do you agree with that, Ivan? Absolutely. I mean, this is this is a phenomenon that is happening in 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 in, in different industries. You know, there is we're going this paradigm shift from owning products to accessing experiences. A uh, perfect example of that is the music industry. You know, we used to own CDs, then we used to do, we used to own MP3 files in our hard drives. Today, we have access to Spotify, and and you know, we access the experience of music. We are not really owning it. And yeah, this is going across industries. We subscribe to the service. We have all the music within our uh, on our computer or on our iPhone. I mean, we we can cache some of it, but I mean, we actually subscribe. So we don't own every track or every album. We just subscribe to the uh, uh, so we get the access to listen to music. Yeah, but here we're talking about, like you say, uh, 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 benefits and, and and access to skills and to different goods and services and uh, and it's a fantastic, a very interesting phenomenon if you think about it. You know. Uh, phenomena like like Airbnb, like uh, Kickstarter. Uh, there's so many companies that are doing amazing stuff, and um, you know the fact that now uh, we are talking about sharing economy. You know, economy is a big word, and and it it, it really gives a big uh, uh, idea of, of of the of the numbers that we're talking about. Yeah. So basically, there's there. I mean, there's you mentioned two examples. Airbnb is very famous. Or Airbnb is a service when people can actually. Uh, uh, rent uh, for a very temporary temporary moment there, either their flat or room in their apartments. It always existed, but basically there's a technology driver behind it. Now, of course, you can access that. You can, let's say, oh, you want to go to Tokyo tomorrow, and instead of looking at the hotel, you're going to look at Airbnb. You're going to find a place somebody's going to rent you, uh, let you this his, his place or a room within his house for a few days, for a week, for even a month, and you can go. So basically, it's like disrupting the be, be, you just you don't need to go towards a hotel. You can go directly to people to people. So this is exactly what we've been also talking about in the past uh, few weeks. Is about this peer to peer economy. So this is this is the technology drivers. We keep talking about social media. We keep talking about all these technologies that allow people to do stuff. But this is the same thing. So basically, you you, you don't need any more to go to the middleman, which could be a hotel a provider. Or it could be, for instance, because. Uh, Jeremiah Wine talked about his experience about allowing somebody else to drive his own car because you know there's a big number that I think you can you only use your car eight percent of the time. I've kind of heard that in a conference a, a, a few months ago. So instead of actually having your car sitting outside, say, oh, I'm going to just allow other people to use it, and you have you have a service online that allows you to do it, and so this. So then you don't go to Avis, you don't go to Hertz, you don't go to these companies. If you need a car, you just, just need a car for, let's say, a, a day and have all these pool of cars that already exist. And it's becoming, so it's becoming a really peer-to-peer -peer economy. It's the pure sense of we're moving from a formal to an informal economy. And what, for me, it's, it's mind-blowing is when you start to look at the details and we start to look at the numbers. Um, I have here, for example, Airbnb. They have... Uh, over 40,000 people per day use this service. Uh, they are um, offering their services in 30,000 cities in 192 countries. I mean, this is not a small fad. This is not just a small thing. This is happening, and this is happening big. Uh, I have some notes here that um, car sharing, you mentioned car sharing. Car sharing, there's a study that says that uh, the, the market for car sharing will reach, will be at the level of 3.3 billion dollars by 2016 so we're talking about big numbers yeah and we're talking about a lot of different uh, a lot of different industries you're talking about automobiles or car sharing but it can be house households can be banking 
money lending as well, you know, peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending. Instead of going to ask for a loan in the bank, I'm going to ask a loan for a friend, but this, or for people I don't know, peer-to-peer -peer again. It can be, uh, of course, there are co-working spaces. This is something that's been going on already for a little bit. Storage space is the same thing. There's travel. There's bikes. I mean, it could be, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's sports, you get equipment, there's, uh, we think about, it could be food, uh, I don't know, there could yeah, be. Yeah, there's a service that, that is called uh, cooking, which basically uh, you can, it, you know, you're good at cooking one thing, you cook one thing, somebody else cooks something else, and, you know, you can share your, your knowledge skills on, 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 on cooking. But, uh, Paul, I have a question. You know, I mean, this is, this is, these are exciting times, and this is really, really, uh, like I say, a very interesting phenomenon. But why? Why do you think this thing happened? I mean, sharing this is something that has been going on since the <laughs> since the dawn of time. You know, if we are as a society, we are used to sharing, and we're used to you know as a community. This is this should not be something new, but it is new. And why do you think there is such a big, big boom in this type of of of, of economy? So first of all, and I mentioned one is the technology drivers. So these technologies, this is not the most important part, but it's one of the, I think one of the three main parts. It's technology allows us to do it. It allows to actually reach to other people. So it actually allows me to say, oh, I want to rent a space I'm in here. It belongs to me, but I want to rent it. Before you know how to, you had to post something at your, I don't know, your local grocery shop, or you can you can put post like around your around your neighborhood. Now you can reach everyone. The same thing that has gone with social media, and there are platforms that have been created, platforms either for free or very cheap. So all these platforms, these technologies, allow you to do it. But besides that, there's more important. Uh, this is where for me the shift is actually more important. Is uh, people are changing. I mean, generations are changing. It, whether you want to talk about millennials or not, I think people are live more in, in, in tribals, so they actually there are tri tribalism. I would I, I wanted to say so. Basically, I think people I uh, they do not need to own things anymore to actually define themselves. You know, there was a long period of time I think when uh, we actually bought a lot of stuff, and this lot of stuff it was you know it was kind of the growth of the economy. We needed a car, we needed a house, we needed, we needed a big TV, we need all these things were kind of also kind of defining us. And this is maybe either for, uh, because people have realized there's a lot of waste, there are stuff you keep stacking up that you don't use. Also, people have seen the environmental effects on the planet as well, so they actually kind of more wary about what, what they buy. And then, of course, there is the recession. So these are the economic factors. Recession. So basically, the, there's been a, a lot. I mean, after the, the glorious 30s, they've been starting having more and more recessions that happen in up and downs, you know, good times and bad times. And of course, when you have a recession, you have to make some of the choices about what you want to buy and what you want to own. So, you, these recessions, the last one in 2008, I think when you mix the social part of people want to be to determine, you know, to they have new dreams. They want to determine themselves. They want to self-actualize themselves. And then when you add on your recession on top of it, plus the technology behind it allows you to do it, you have the kind of suddenly the perfect uh, recipe for the Syrian economy. Is all these factors coming together? Do you agree? Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, like you say. I mean, it, it, it seems like a perfect storm of all these elements that are happening, uh, connected with these disruptive technologies. This, this. Uh, you know, we spoke about it in a different show about the, the social local mobile, Solomo, the power of Solomo. It's allowing new services to, to, to come out, new types of sharing services. And, uh, and, and the fact that, you know, all you need is a mobile phone and, and you have access to location, you have access to people, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So, big, big opportunity. Um, and what, what's interesting is the fact that, yes, we're talking about peer to peer and we're talking about individuals. But uh, you know, we're talking about the fact that there are many larger organizations that they have realized that there is a big potential in this, and they're starting to implement this even as, as they are large organizations. You know, Coca-Cola, for example, Coca-Cola, they are starting to crowdfund, uh, to crowdsource, uh, you know, design ideas. Um, there's different companies. Adobe, they have also some programs in which they are allowing people to share their knowledge with them. You know, well, this and, is big, and, man. Sorry, and Adobe has actually, uh, I know it's one tiny example, but Adobe in terms of subscription has moved on. So the cloud service, I don't know, Creative Cloud, I think it's called Adobe Creative Cloud. So you don't have to buy any more uh, Photoshop and the old 
suite of uh, creative uh, services from Adobe, you now subscribe to it. So you get access to all their software as a subscription base. So you keep getting updates and everything. And you, so you still download, of course, at least for the moment, you still download the, 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 the software on your computer, but you subscribe to it. So you don't have to buy it to subscribe to it. So this is all a move. But again, like allowed by technology, the fact that broadband speeds are higher and the fact that also uh, the cloud is here. So if you mix, this is why I think if you mix the social, the social changes of new generation, if you mix the economical impact of our current, uh, our, our current environment and the technology, if you mix these three things, then you get the reason why, like you say, it's a perfect storm. Yeah. However, there is, there is uh, one element that I, I, I keep thinking a lot about is the concept, the element of trust. I think the trust is the key, and this is something that for me is fascinating. The fact that, uh, yes, uh, the, all the forces that you have mentioned are really strong and they're really meaningful and important for this, but the fact that you know people are open and they are more trustworthy, trustful because they're more trustworthy because of the social element of, of the social media uh, factors, uh, that's what I find also fascinating right now. Like I know people that they will never think about you know opening the doors to their house. And now they know that they are very active on Airbnb, for example. Uh, and, and this is a big shift, a mental shift for a lot of people that I find also fascinating. Yeah, I think, I think that, the, the, again, the fact that people have been starting to be used, you have this, uh, this conversation of everyone, these kind of nodes that are created. So I think we define ourselves differently. I think there is new identities being defined. Of course, it's easier maybe if you're younger because you were born within this uh, type of environment. It'd be harder if you're not. But I mean, we define ourselves uh, uh, differently. So we accept, I mean, the element of trust. Trust is basically, is also what defines people. I mean, by essence, I mean, being able to, it's like, you know, this, I think it's a normal trend within our economy. We keep talking about, so, you know, the economy has been, in the past 50 years, has become more and more integrated, more and more integrated, and now we're reaching the point where this integration is accessible at all levels. I'm not saying that it's accessible everywhere yet. Of course, there's a lot of emerging countries and, and uh, non-developed countries that don't have access to that technology, I mean, as much as we do here in Western countries, but I think this is a trend that is just keep going, we're going, uh, having these nodes are created, there's peer-to-peer -peer economy. So we're moving from a very formal economy, and I know I repeat myself, to an informal economy. I mean, all the models, the business models that used to be applied were companies that had, you know, because you didn't have any other choice that to go through a system of corporation and companies to find a business model. Now people can actually do that themselves. But as you said, it always exists. People were exchanging, before even the creation of money, and money is basically trust, is people were exchanging goods and services. You know, you would go, I mean, if you go to very disrupted economies after war, after a war, for instance, there's no money. So people do these type of exchanges. They have to find other ways to actually, you know, sustain themselves and sustain a living. So what we're actually seeing is just the same, a similar pattern but on a global scale because of the access, the reach of the velocity of the technology. Yeah, absolutely. Very exciting times. Um, well, that's, that's the sharing economy. I hope that uh, you're going to get the opportunity to know a lot about this next week when you will be uh, at Le Web in London. Yeah. Uh, as, as Paul mentioned, Le Web London will have uh, the, the main key, uh, the subject of the entire uh, conference is the sharing economy. So if we invite you to uh, check out the, the live stream, of course, if you can attend, you know, you go and have a great time and say hi to Paul if you are there. Uh, but if you're going to make it like me, uh, enjoy, the, enjoy the live stream and really uh, check out all these great speakers that are going to the web next week. Um, and that's it. That's it from the Digital Loop this week. I don't know, Paul, do you have anything else you want to, to add? No, I'll see, I'll see you next week live from the web. Awesome, awesome. Well, okay, guys, uh, remember you can subscribe uh, to our podcast on iTunes. You can listen to these uh, recordings on uh, SoundCloud as well as on Stitcher. And, of course, you can uh, look at uh, Paul's beautiful face uh, and my ugly face in uh, YouTube and at thedigitalloop.co. Uh, that's it. Exactly. Have a great day. You said, you said everything. See you next week. Bye-bye.